Happy pitchers and catchers report day. The Orioles are in Sarasota kicking off spring training and baseball is in the air. So as the O's arrive to Sarasota, what better time than now to do another opening day roster prediction 2.0, my second try at predicting the 26 players the O's will take north to Boston. It's coming up on this episode of the Locked On Orioles podcast. You are Locked On Orioles, your daily Baltimore Orioles podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, Orioles fans. Today is Wednesday, February 15th, 2023. And welcome back in to the Locked On Orioles podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. As always, I'm your host, Connor Newcomb. And coming up on today's episode It is Orioles opening day roster prediction 2.0 as listen, it's a fun day in baseball pitchers and catchers report to spring training in Sarasota today. And so we get a first look at these Orioles players really since the season ended back on October 5th. And now real spring training doesn't start for another six days. It's another 10 days until the Orioles play their first spring training game. But pitchers and catchers reporting means that baseball season, at least in my world, has started, and of course it has started here on the podcast as well. We're back to five days a week here on the pod. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the Locked On Orioles YouTube page. Make sure to like us and subscribe wherever you listen as well because we're going to do roster prediction 2.0. Already did one of these kind of right after the new year, taking a look at which 26 players the O's would put on the opening day roster. It's going to change a little bit. Of course, the O's have, have made a, a major deal since then, or somewhat major deal in the Cole Irvin trade. Of course, that will factor in. So what are my 26 players I'm predicting? That's coming up on this episode of the Locked On Orioles podcast, which is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Now, FanDuel Sportsbook is the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started today. So let's jump right into it. Orioles opening day roster prediction 2.0. And I got to say, it's not like I'm making sweeping changes from opening day roster prediction 1.0, but there are going to be a few adjustments here. So because today is pitchers and catchers report day, let's start with the pitchers. Of course, 26 players now make an opening day roster. And unlike the last couple of years when teams you know could carry 30 players or 28 players for the first month, then it got cut down. It's 26 players from opening day this season, and it must be 13 pitchers and 13 hitters. It has to be an even split that way. Now, Technically, it could be 14 hitters and 12 pitchers, but it cannot be 14 pitchers and 12 hitters. And because of the state of today's game of baseball, teams want to maximize the amount of arms. So pretty much every team goes with 13 pitchers and 13 hitters, and that is most likely what the Orioles will do. So we start with the guys who I think are locks. And you could argue a couple of these names aren't locks, but in my mind, I really do think, I mean, on February 15th, You know, we are a month and a half out still from opening day. I really do think the Orioles have 11 locks on their pitching staff. I do kind of think there's only two spots open. Here's your locks to me. Kyle Gibson, Cole Irvin, Dean Kramer, Kyle Bradish, Tyler Wells, Austin Voth, Felix Bautista, Dylan Tate, CNL Perez, Michael Givens, and Brian Baker. I think all 11 of those guys are locks. Now, you could make arguments for Brian Baker not being a lock, even though he was so good down the stretch. He was shaky early last season. He's a reliever. Relievers are volatile, you know. Maybe somebody beats him out. You could argue Austin Voth is not a lock on this team because although he was good after the waiver claim, he's been bad in the past, and you don't really know what his role would be right now on this pitching staff. I think he's he's well behind the eight ball in terms of of getting a rotation spot. So would he be good out of the bullpen? I think those are two guys you could certainly say are not locks, but I just think because of how good Baker has been and really he's got the best stuff, you know, out of that bullpen besides DL Hall and, and Felix Bautista. And because Austin Voth is out of options, which is important here, which means the Orioles would have to DFA him and almost certainly he would get claimed on waivers. I think that's going to give him a spot as well, along with the fact that he pitched really well after coming over to Baltimore last season. So those 11 are my locks. And and obviously, you know, I had 10 locks the last time we did this. You add Cole Irvin after the trade to the mix. The O's are not going to trade for a guy like that, giving away Daryl Hornheyes and not have him be a lock for the rotation. 
Mike Elias said at the caravan that you can pencil in Kyle Gibson and Cole Irvin to the rotation already. So that gives you 11 locks. And again, with 13 pitchers, there's only two spots remaining. So to me, after that, there are eight players on the bubble for those remaining two spots. You have guys who helped the team last year in Keegan Aiken, Mike Bauman, Nick Vespi, Spencer Watkins. You've got your interesting rule five pick in Andrew Paletti. And then you got your two stud prospects in Grayson Rodriguez and DL Hall. Those are my guys, Joey Crable in there as well. Those, those are my eight guys on the bubble. And I really do think that you just got to make the upside play here. I, I, you have to put Grayson Rodriguez and DL Hall on this opening day roster, right? I mean, you have to. And if you subscribe to that, that, that those are two of the most talented arms in this staff, which they are and should be on the staff, then it's kind of hard to have a lot of roster battles right now. If these guys stay healthy, and again, it's hard to do that, especially among pitchers. One of these 13 players is bound to get injured during spring training and open up a spot for someone else. But right now, I think those 13, the 11 locks plus Rodriguez and Hall, I think that's the 13 pitchers that the Orioles go to Boston with for opening day. And I think if you polled Orioles fans, I honestly guess that over 90% of Orioles fans, if you gave them a list of, of the O's pitchers in camp and said, pick the 13 that make the roster. I think over 90% honestly would pick those 13 pitchers. I think it's sort of not as close to that, but similar with the hitters. I feel like for the first time in a long time, you know, we're six weeks out from, from opening day. And if everyone stays healthy, I think most O's fans could at least get 24 or 25 out of 26 opening day roster players pretty confidently in making a prediction. Now, that doesn't mean there's not going to be injuries. And, and there's there's going to be other guys competing for these spots. I, I put 10 more players in kind of the outside chance group that, hey, if they had an amazing spring training and if there were a couple of injuries they could get on the roster, Bruce Zimmerman, Logan Gillespie, Yenier Cano, you know, all guys who, who pitched for this team last year. You got a guy in Darwin's and Hernandez who and Eduardo or Edward Bizardo who have big league experience. Then I also threw in Drew Rahm, Chris Valamont, Cole Uvila, Morgan McSweeney, and Noah Denoyer, all with outside chances as well to round up that group of 10. But really, when you go back to the eight pitchers on the bubble, if there was an injury, I almost don't even think it matters, you know, whether the injury is to a starter or to a reliever, because as we'll talk about in a bit, we've talked about plenty on this podcast. The O's are going to have starters in their bullpen. Because as Michael Elias said, they have 12 candidates for the starting rotation right now. And he said the O's are most likely going to go with a five-man rotation. They kicked around the idea of a six-man rotation. But as he said, you know, with the 13-pitcher limit, it becomes tough to keep six rotation members and... That would, of course, leave you with just seven relievers, and it's tough to operate with seven relievers in today's MLB. Most teams have at least eight in their bullpen, and especially with the bullpen being the strength of the O's, it's going to be five starters and eight relievers. So you're going to have starters in the bullpen. So say, for example, Kyle Gibson suffers an injury in spring training and, and isn't going to be ready for opening day. I don't think that necessarily means that, you know, only – Mike Bauman and Spencer Watkins and Bruce Zimmerman are, you know, up for grabs in terms of getting that roster spot. No, because you have guys in the bullpen, like presumably an Austin Voth or a Tyler Wells, who can slide right into a starting spot because they literally did it last year for the Orioles. And then you can take the best arm remaining. Now, if there was an injury to anyone, it's tough to kind of pick that next guy. I honestly think right now I would put Mike Bauman as the kind of first guy out of this roster. I think if there's an injury, I would call on Mike Bauman as the next guy. After that, I would go to Keegan Aiken. I know it was rough down the stretch, but he was so good early in the season last year. And Aiken and Bauman both can pitch as a starter and a reliever. We've seen them do it. And then after those two... I think I would go to Joey Crable next. Again, rough down the stretch, but he's done it in the O's bullpen before. After that, I'd go to Spencer Watkins because I, I can trust him in a starting role to get outs. Then I'd go with Vespi 
then probably Andrew Politi, just because I know he's a rule five pick and the O's probably want to keep him, but you, you just don't know much about him. So it's hard to put him in this conversation. He's going to have a chance to win an opening day roster spot. I, I just don't know if he's going to get one. Now that brings me to what I think the rotation in the bullpen will look like. Right now, my guess is the O's will go in this order to start the season with their starting pitchers. They'll go Kyle Gibson, Dean Kramer, and Kyle Bradish to open the year in Boston. Then they would go with Cole Irvin at number four and Grayson Rodriguez at number five in Texas. That would mean Grayson would get to make his major league debut back home in Texas. He'd have all his family there. Then Kyle Gibson would go in the final game of that Texas series. And then the home opener would be Dean Kramer against the Yankees on April 6th. I think that'd be a good way to, you know, maybe you don't feel like Kramer is an opening day starter, but a good way to reward him for his great performance in 2022 and let him start the home opener against the Yankees. And it would go Kramer, Bradish, and Irvin um, in that first home series. You could maybe see the Orioles kind of flip-flopping and making Rodriguez at four so he can start in Texas and then also start the home opening series against the Yankees to get more butts in the seats. But either way, I think that's your five. Then the bullpen, Felix Bautista is your closer. Your high leverage guys are Dylan Tate, CNL Perez, Brian Baker, and Michael Givens. And then you've got Austin Voth, DL Hall, and Tyler Wells all in these kind of fluid roles. They can be long relievers. They can be a bridge guy. They can be kind of a follower, you know, eat two or three innings. I think all three of them could pitch in a one inning role if you needed to. Each of them would be ready to step up and make a spot start or fill into the rotation if there was an injury or something happened to any of the five starters. So I think... These 13 give the Orioles a whole lot of flexibility. And again, they have depth. I don't think you'd be upset if Mike Bauman or Keegan Aiken or Spencer Watkins or Joey Crable had an opening day roster spot. You could trust them to get outs as well. This is the most pitching depth the Orioles have had in a while. And it makes me pretty excited to get to opening day. But next up, we're going to flip over to the hitters where it's somewhat similar that there's a good amount of locks, but Maybe you could make some more arguments for some other guys. So I'll make my prediction who will be the 13 hitters on the opening day roster. That's coming up next. But first, this episode of the Locked On Orioles podcast is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. The midway point of the NBA season is here, and now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Now, new customers, you can get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 that's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. So just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, it's secure, and it's super easy to use. And then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores to threes that are drained. And the FanDuel app, it makes it super, super easy to bet on the NBA really anytime that I want. And right now, something that I'm I'm really looking at is these futures. And I've talked about it this week, but if you can go and get Nikola Jokic on the FanDuel app right now for MVP. He is at minus 150. I know that's not great value, but I just feel like he's going to run away with this award and it might be time to go put some money on Jokic before his odds get even better. Plus, FanDuel lets you combine your bets as well. It doesn't just have to be Jokic for MVP. You can do others for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. So don't miss the chance to get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. So it's Orioles opening day roster prediction 2.0. My second time this offseason trying to predict the opening day roster. What better time to do it than here today as pitchers and catchers are reporting to Sarasota, Florida. Talked about the 13 pitchers who I think will make the opening day roster. Let's move on to the 13 hitters. And let's start with the locks. I think they are 10 of them. Starting with the catchers, I think it's pretty obvious. Adley Rutschman is your starting catcher. And James McCann, who the Orioles traded for from the Mets, who's been a starter in the past, he is your backup. You know, Unless there's an injury, that's easy to say. Then your locks in the infield, I think there's five. You got Ryan Mountcastle, an easy lock. Ramon Arias, Jorge Mateo, each played well enough last year to be a lock. 
Gunnar Henderson, obviously going to be hitting in the middle of that order. And then Adam Frazier, you know, the Orioles paid him $8 million on a free agent contract. He's going to be a lock as well. And then in the outfield, you've got Cedric Mullins. Obviously, you've got Anthony Santander, obviously. And even though he struggled mightily down the stretch last year, I do think Austin Hayes is still a lock for this opening day roster. So that's 10 locks among hitters, which opens up kind of similar to the pitchers. Not that many spots, just three open spots. And I would say nine hitters are on the bubble. They're all kind of on different parts of the bubble. There's there's one category of bubble players that is guys who were on the team last year. Taron Vavra, Kyle Stowers, and Ryan McKenna all produced to different levels. Not many of them got a lot of playing time last season, but they probably have the inside track. Then there's the two prospects I would put on the bubble in Joey Ortiz and Jordan Westberg. They're going to have a chance to make this team out of spring training. And then the last group I would put as the backup first baseman left-handed hitter types, if the O's want to go that way, in Franchi Cordero, Nomar Mazzara, Lewin Diaz, and Ryan O'Hearn. I would call those nine guys the guys on the bubble. And right now, it's hard to think the Orioles are going to go any other way but going with Taron Vavra, Kyle Stowers, and Ryan McKenna as those final three players on the roster. I mean, obviously, you know, after calling them up last season, the O's want to get a longer look at Vavra and Stowers, see how big a part they can be of the lineup moving forward. And the big thing you get with Stowers, first of all, is some power from the left side. We know there's swing and miss in the game, but we also know there's really big power. He can play, you know, both corner outfield positions for you as well. Not a plus plus defender, but he can hold his own out there. And the O's kind of lack big left-handed hitting power and Stowers could give that to this lineup. Taron Vavra obviously gives you a, a different look at the plate and he gives you versatility. You know, he's not the kind of power hitter. It's nice that he's a left-handed bat, but he sprays the ball around the field. He has an amazing batter's eye. You know, he's going to get on base a good amount and he is versatile. You can play him at second base, shortstop, third base. And really, if you need to, you can play him at all three outfield positions as well. And I think Vavra, to be honest with you, is going to get a good chunk of playing time in the outfield this season. And you know, he's going to play some second base. I don't see him playing any shortstop or third. He's going to play a little bit of second. But I think when we see Vavra, he'll be DHing some and he'll be playing the corner outfield just because he can. He's athletic out there and it's a way to get his bat into the lineup. I really do think Vavra and Stowers are most likely going to make it. So it really comes down to one spot. And that spot at this point would go to a, a fifth outfielder more so than, you know, having another infielder on the team more so than, than having potentially a seventh infielder. And so you're looking at, do you go with Ryan McKenna? Who's the guy who's, you know, been on the team for multiple years now plays really good defense, can be a defensive replacement at all three outfield positions can hit lefties still did hit lefties. Well, last year can come off the bench and steal you a base has good speed as a pinch runner as well. And a guy who's been around. And I still think there is room to grow with that bat. Or do you go with someone who, is maybe more of a question mark, but has a higher ceiling and gives you a left-handed bat and can play some first base. And the guys in Cordero, Mazzara, Diaz, or O'Hearn. And I just think it's going to be McKenna. I think the Orioles are going to value that defense in the outfield. I think he's, you know, a little bit of maybe an insurance policy for Austin Hayes, because if Austin Hayes isn't hitting super well, then you know, you'd like to have another really good outfielder out there a few days a week besides Cedric Mullins and Santander, Stowers, Vavra and Frazier can, you know, hold their own in the outfield, but they're not exactly the guys that are going to, you know, go win a gold glove out there. And, and Ryan McKenna could be at that level. So that's why I put him up there. The other big thing that we learned earlier this offseason, which I think knocks down the players like Cordero and Diaz and O'Hearn from having a better shot at making this opening day roster is that. We know that Taron Vavra has been working a lot at first base defensively this offseason, and he is committed to being able to play that position. So you add it to the six other positions I already mentioned he can play. It looks like he can play first base as well. And if the Orioles want to give Ryan Mountcastle a day off or Mountcastle is, you know, in a slump and needs to sit for a day or two, they don't have to worry about, you know, oh, is it okay if we play Adley Rutschman at first base, or, you know, do we play James McCann and then have both of our catchers in the lineup? Do we have to maybe stick Santander at first and see how it goes? And you don't have to worry about carrying a player like Franchi Cordero or Lewin Diaz, who, yeah, their swings look good sometimes, but they strike out a lot. And there's reasons both of those guys are basically getting minor league deals at this point because 
the bat has not come through consistently at the major league level. So instead of worrying about carrying those guys, have them be less versatile. I mean, Cordero and Mazzara, yeah, they can play the outfield, but it's not very good. Whereas Vavra can be a plus defender in the outfield, plus play infield positions. Plus, if he plays first base for you, he's your super utility man and it opens up another spot on the roster if you were going to keep Vavra anyway. So I really do think it's going to start out with Vavra Stowers and McKenna being those guys Could it change if some of them aren't hitting? Yeah, it could. And one of these more veteran guys, if they stick in AAA, could come up or maybe a guy like Ortiz or Westberg. But I think those are the 13 guys. Now, I put a couple of guys in the outside chance category. Daz Cameron, the center fielder, Colton Kowser, and then a couple of minor league signings at first base and and Curtis Terry and Josh Lester. But really don't think those guys have have really much of a shot, although they they will be in big league spring training. But we're looking at a lineup that I think is going to have some different combinations because I I put down what I thought could be a lineup for the Orioles, but this may not even be the opening day lineup. I think it's going to be a lot about matchups and and who's swinging it well and who's playing what position, but I put together this lineup Mullins leading off playing center field, Adley Rutschman catching and hitting second Gunnar Henderson at third base, hitting third Anthony Santander DHing and batting fourth Ryan Mountcastle at first base, batting fifth Ramon Arias playing second base and batting sixth. Adam Frazier in right field, batting seventh. Austin Hayes in left field, batting eighth. And Jorge Mateo playing shortstop and batting ninth. Now, that doesn't mean that I don't think Vavra or Stowers are one of the Orioles' nine best hitters. It just means that I think early in the season, the O's will probably lean on, you know, more of the veteran guys in Frazier and Hayes to kind of see where they're at in April. And Vavra and Stowers will still play and they'll get mixed in there. And, you know, Vavra will play the infield and the outfield and Stowers will play the outfield and will DH some and McKenna will play against some lefties. And of course, James McCann will be in there some days to give Adley the day off from behind the plate. So you you still have a, a fairly strong bench. But I don't think those nine are going to be the set in stone nine. I think Vavra and Stowers, while they're not going to play every day, neither of them are going to be. Just get that, you know, set in your head. Vavra and Stowers are not playing every day. But I think they're going to be mixed in a good amount to see how those bats play at the major league level. And Brandon Hyde has some weapons here to kind of mix and match with his lineup. And I think, you know, it'll be tough to see the same lineup day after day. I think we're going to get a lot of different both positional and place in the lineup and just players in their combinations for the Orioles. So those are the 26 players, pitchers, Gibson, Irvin, Kramer, Bradish, Wells, both Bautista, Tate, Perez, Baker, Gibbons, Rodriguez, and Hall, and the hitters, Rutschman, McCann, Mountcastle, Frazier, Mateo, Arias, Henderson, Mullins, Santander, Hayes, Vavra, Stowers, and McKenna. But the question is, you know, we're still only at February 15th, pitchers and catchers reporting today, teams all the time, especially teams like the Orioles, Make moves and add players in spring training as well. So coming up next to finish off the pod, we'll take a look around baseball and think, okay, this is a 26-player prediction, but how could it change by the Orioles maybe adding some players from the outside? So with my 26 players predicted for the Orioles opening day roster in my roster prediction 2.0, let's look around the rest of the league and take a look at how this prediction could change. Because... Obviously, the number one way it would change is one of these 26 players gets injured and somebody else has to step in. But other than that, it could change because the Orioles acquire a player from outside the organization who they think is better than one of the current 26 players that I have slotted in. So really, the number one way this would change would clearly be to trade for an ace. I think we're at the point in the offseason where it's probably not going to happen for the Orioles. Most likely the final starting pitcher they acquire was that Cole Irvin trade, and they're pretty much set in you know what their, their starting pitching options look like going into spring training, but that would be the number one way. A second way would be something that Mike Elias has talked about a little bit over the last few weeks. The Orioles are still doing, kind of looking at free agents in terms of a left-handed corner bat who can play some solid defense as well. Now, there's some options out there. They're not amazing. By far the best one is still Jerickson Profar. He is still out there. Him and Michael Waka, the only two top 50 free agents remaining on the market. I think the O's are probably past bringing in Waka at this point, but I can still see Profar helping him. He plays the corner outfield. He can play the infield. He is a versatile player. He's a switch hitter. I think he'd really help the O's. Could kind of take Ryan McKenna's place on that bench, make the bench a little bit stronger. Then you got players like Ben Gamble, Robbie Grossman, and Edwin Rios who are still out there. Don't know how much they really helped the Orioles, but could be options. Then there's also potentially signing a relief pitcher. Elias has talked about that the O's are still kicking some tires on some free agent relievers. 
some of the top names, you know, mostly lefties still out there. Matt Moore, Zach Britton, Brad Hand out there, Jimmy Nelson, an interesting right-hander that's still out there. So there's still some options for the Orioles. Then you could see maybe a trade away from the roster could happen. Something similar to what we saw right before opening day last year when the Orioles dealt Cole Sulcer and Tanner Scott to the Miami Marlins. Now, I think the O's would want more major league ready players back in return in that kind of deal because they're looking to compete here in 2023. But that could happen with a player like maybe CNL Perez. I've talked about how he might come back down to earth a little bit in 2023 when you look at his stats and how he did have some luck on his side in his breakout season last year. And maybe the Orioles think that Nick Vespi is ready to take the next step or they like Keegan Aiken as a lefty or maybe they're just ready to put Mike Bauman in a bullpen role, want to clear up a spot. So you could see that happening as well. Or even a waiver claim the other way. You know, you could see the O's. Mike Elias really likes a guy he sees on waivers. He claims him. All of a sudden, that guy has a good spring training, and boom, he makes the roster. I don't think Elias at all is done making waiver claims because he loves to do it. And then probably the last thing would be just another interesting trade that we didn't really see coming. Obviously, the Cole Irvin trade, you expected the Orioles to acquire a starting pitcher via trade. That part wasn't surprising. But it was kind of surprising that it was Cole Irvin because he wasn't the sexiest name now he still helps the Orioles and he's got a rotation spot. He made them better, but it was also a player that not a lot of people were talking about being available in trade. I mean, he had four years of team control left. The Oakland athletics just seemingly want to trade any major leaguer with a pulse at this point. And I don't know if we saw the Orioles giving up a player like Daryl Hernandez in that trade, but they did it. So maybe we could see another trade like that. I talked about last week on the pod about players like, Gavin Sheets of the White Sox or Lamont Wade of the Giants being kind of interesting outside the box players that the Orioles maybe could target in a trade before opening day and doesn't have to be a hitter. It could be a pitcher as well that kind of fits into that mold where, you know, they're not the player that is being talked about week after week of, hey, this team could trade this guy soon. Someone from off the board, kind of like Cole Irvin was, could be a trade that happens. And if the Orioles think that player is going to upgrade their 26 man roster, Elias, at this point, it looks like he will make that trade if the price makes sense for the O's like the Irvin deal did. So don't be surprised if, you know, it might not be the big blockbuster deal for the ace, but a trade like that comes down for the Orioles and, and helps this team and changes this opening day roster prediction heading into March 30th in Boston opening day for the Orioles. But That'll do it for today's episode. It won't be, though, the final opening day roster prediction of spring training. Probably going to do at least three more of these every couple of weeks as we get closer and closer to opening day. And, hey, as moves are made, things could change on my predictions. But that was a look at the 26 players. I think at this point on February 15th, the O's will take to Boston for opening day. But, of course, we are back to daily here on the podcast this week. Episodes every day, Monday through Friday, which means... We'll be back with another podcast tomorrow. What are we going to talk about? Well, we're going to talk about day one in Sarasota. Pitchers and catchers report. Get a little Orioles news and notes from whatever we learned today. That's coming up on the pod tomorrow. But until then, I'm Connor Newcomb, and this has been the Locked On Orioles podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.